Jim Stewart. I'm Rick Collins, and this is Off the Bench. Today we will be talking about opening day for the NFL. It has been 31 weeks of basically rehab <sighs> Too for long. everybody. Yes, <laughs> it's, we've had to go through withdrawal. Football, other sports have tried to take his place, but now the it, daddy's it back. It just never felt nope. right. No, nope. no, nope. so we're it's back home. Right. Yes. And we are going to be kicked off with an AFC matchup of the Chiefs and the Patriots. Yeah, very, actually a very good matchup, even though the Chiefs aren't necessarily a powerhouse the last couple of years. They've been in the playoffs, and they've made a couple of runs, and looking at a defense that was number one in, t in turnovers last year with 33, this is a good matchup. I think this is really the tale of two complete opposite teams. Yes. The Chiefs are a good defense. They're someone who likes to be homegrown. They they usually don't go out and bring in a lot of people when it comes to. They're the, not paying a bunch of money no, on the market. To the to the trade deadline, they don't do trades. They don't sign in free agency. Yeah. Uh, the Patriots, on the other hand, have no loyalty to anybody. <laughs> they got rid of That's Blunt and everybody else in their running back core. They brought in Rex Burkhead from uh, oh, from Cincinnati. Yes. Uh, who is a is older running back, but he has very little tread on his tires. He came out of Nebraska, uh, a very toted running back who, who is very reliable, uh, multi-purpose, can catch out of the backfield. Uh, but they did lose Edelman. They, he tore his ACL in one of the last uh, preseason games this year. But they added Brandon Cooks, and they added just recently Philip Dorsett in a trade from the Indian Indianapolis Colts. I think that'll more than offset what they've lost with uh, Edelman, at least for the short term. I know long term, not having Edelman and what he's been able to produce the last couple of years is pretty significant. But they also get back Rob Gr Gronkowski, and that's going to be a huge uplift for that. Yeah, Rob offense. Gronkowski last year only played eight games. He had 25 receptions, and he had 540 yards on 25 receptions, though he only had uh, four touchdowns. That number should go up. The real question is, will they be able to keep him the whole year? <laughs> and to be honest, I think they already had an in-house wide receiver in Amendola to replace Edelman. Yeah. He is basically a clone, not as explosive, yeah. probably not, cannot see as much of the field because he, you know, Edelman was a quarterback in college. Uh, but I think Cooks is more of an outside threat. Yeah, and inside. he's fast. And that just having that guy on the outside who can run down and catch a 40-yard 40, 40 pass is going to be huge for their offense. And, and they've never really been a running team. No. You know, if they put Rex at the starting uh, running back spot, which there have been some rumors that that may happen, the uh, they basically have a you know six wide receiver if they go all wide receivers because he is as good uh, in Cincinnati. As a he actually pass played, yeah, he, he played inside slot receiver for a few games in in Cincinnati because he's that talented, and the fact that he is now uh, at a pa in a pass happy offense, I think it's really going to pay dividends. I think it's going to be very hard for any defense to be able to match up with that many wide receivers running around. Let's look at the other side, Kansas City. Uh, really, they're only held back by the quarterback position. Can Alex Smith lead this team back into the playoffs? Alex Smith has never really been the problem. Not saying he's the solution, right? but he's never really been the problem. He is the quintessential field general. He's not going to beat you. He's not going to be the thing that, that uh, moves the needle left, you know, to a win or to a loss. But he is going to make sure that you are on game plan, that the the, the offense is balanced, and he's not going to lose the game. This for you. feels like early two thousands Baltimore. Yes, a dominant defense, a defense that turns the ball over a lot, like I said earlier, and an offense that just doesn't turn the ball over. That's the key for them, not turning the ball over. So. I am a little confused on where they are going to get their offense. If it's not going to be Alex Smith and they're not going to put Mahomes in at starting uh, wide, uh, quarterback. quarterback with his arm, I don't know where they're going to get the offense. They, uh, um, Charles has been gone now for a couple of years. Yeah, uh, he was the most exp he was their offense for a while. I mean, he I think the last couple of years he was there when he wasn't injured, he was 36 percent of their offense or something like that. Yeah. ridiculous. But I, I honestly... They're a march down the field team, though, and I think, you know, they're not going to light up the scoreboard. I mean, oh, we no, know they they're not no. going to. They were basically the Vikings of the AFC. Yeah. They, had a, they used to have an unbelievably explosive running back and a passing game that made you at least have to be kind of honest. Yeah. And, and most teams crowded the, uh, crowded the box and did not allow the I run. I think tonight, if they don't turn the ball over, they're going to have a chance against the Patriots. Now... 
if the Patriots use deflated footballs, that's going to come back to the haunt them now. I, I, yeah, I think that's true. Um, you know, the NFL has been probably the most technologically savvy league in all of sports. Yeah. And this is just another leap. There's been a uh, report out that they're now going to be chi they're going to chip all the footballs this year. I don't know what they're going to get out of it other than the amount of distance the ball was going and maybe the amount of rotations the ball has. Well, I don't know. I'd watch out, Tom Brady. They might be checking the air pressure on those balls, too. <laughs> Well, with that, I think it should be a very interesting uh, kickoff to the season. Um, the rest of uh, the week one starts on Sunday. Yeah, and I mean, it's going to be an exciting season, I think, as here Dallas Cowboy fans, at least I am, that I'm excited to see can Dallas, without Zeke for maybe six weeks, up to six weeks, can they keep moving the ball down the field as efficiently and effectively as they did last year? I'm actually more excited in the fact that we're getting a Thursday night game to kick off the season that is an actually exciting game. Usually it's like, like it's like Jacksonville, it's like that. Jacksonville versus the Tampa Chiefs Bay or, or something. Or Tampa Bay versus the 49ers. Games that no one cares about. This at least is going to be something where if the Patriots win or lose, it could affect the rest of the could season. Have, absolutely. So at least they're going against a team that might even ha uh, hold them to either a low amount of points or even beat them because the the style just as uh, well, if you look at the last time they matched up, it was actually in the uh, conference round of the playoffs in 2006. Well, the 2015 season, but in January 2016, and the Chiefs only lost by a touchdown, and that was two years ago. That was after Jamal Charles and before they've upgraded their offensive line. I think they've got a significant shot at beating, at beating the Patriots this time around. You know, and I think we're going to have to leave the rest of the Week One matchups till tomorrow, but. This is going to be an exciting uh, game tonight. I'm ready um, for NFL. Yeah, it's been way too Oof. long. I really feel like saying winter has come now, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Uh, and, I, and I really feel that, you know, as hard of a year as it's been for everybody, especially people in Texas, I do believe football will be able to provide a little bit of relief and escape from what's going on. And and J.J. Watt has been a, a very, very um, – bright spot in the bleakness that has happened down in, in yeah. South Texas. But and we're I think about to see more bleakness potentially in Miami. Oh. So uh, Irma, Irma it's is possibly not, shifting Not west. the best way you want to start the NFL season, but I think it's going to be an exciting game tonight. So uh, on that note, we will be back, and next we'll be talking about baseball. Yeah. After this. anyone's guess what's going on with the Rangers right now yeah the ballpark in Arlington has not been kind to the Rangers this year in fact pretty much the entire season hasn't been very kind to the Rangers this year the U Darvish trade obviously kind of felt like a a bit of a tank midseason yes. at the trade deadline but all of a sudden they've started making a run and as soon as they got to 500 they would get to 500, then they back off a game. They get to 500, back off a game, and now they're in the midst of this, what is a just a mess. You know what I've always found very race. fascinating about our division is it is always between two teams, it's always complete opposites. When the Rangers are killing it, the Houston Astros are tanking. Yep. If the Houston Astros are killing it, we're mm -hmm. tanking. And, and, and not all of it is gameplay, a lot of it is when we're doing really well in, in, in knocking balls out of the ballpark and, and having good ERA games, Houston is like every single person on the roster is injured. And then it goes the other way around. You know, we you don't think it's directly related to the fact Nolan Ryan's was here and there now he's down there and all success is just passed along with him? I, 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 do, curse. Believe, I do believe that, that he is an excellent GM and an excellent president. Uh, I think Josh Daniels has done a decent job, but I John think Daniels, uh, John, yeah. sorry, John Daniels has done a decent job. I think there's been some places where he's messed up. Um, you know, he's he's put too many eggs in one basket a lot of times, and I do believe that has hurt us. 
He's gone after a lot of older players, which, which in today's world, if you're trying to win now, makes sense. Yeah. But we are not one player away. This well, team is not one I think the problem is away. that John Daniels and a lot of the Rangers brass believe that they are one player away. And you get into, we've gotten into that with the Mavericks the last four or five years as they thought, hey, we're one player away from getting into the playoffs and making a run. And everybody else is going, what are they looking at? Because there's no way that they are one player away. It's like they've forgotten, both teams have forgotten that it has been almost six years since either of them even sniffed the championship. Yeah. You know, we went twice in a row with the Rangers. One of them was one strikeout away, and the other one was a Nelly Cruz uh, <laughs> hits the ground. Whiff. Whiff. Uh, and I do believe these guys are not willing to develop. Um, Joey Gallo has been sitting in the in, in uh, development at the rain, at the uh, Rough Riders yeah. for almost two years. Now that they brought him up, I understand his hitting his uh, uh, batting average is not the greatest, <laughs> but he is slugging the ball out of the ballpark almost every it's night. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen with him hitting what 204, 205 now, but with 30 home runs basically and uh, 50 RBIs, 60 RBIs. It's got to be more than that now. How? has he been so productive in terms of power numbers and yet his value average be so low? I think it's unprecedented. I blame you, Darvish. But look, <laughs> looking back at the playoff race, because we are in the middle of a playoff push right now in the, in the AL, there's seven teams within three and a half games of that last wild card spot. Currently, the Twins are holding that spot, but you've got the Angels, the Rays, the Royals, the Rangers. The, it's it's insane. I think it all depends on how far back you are. Even two or three games, that's a really big hurdle to get over because there's so many games and there's so many people either winning and losing at the same time. It's not like football where you're one game back and one of your teams lose a game and you win a game and then you're in. In baseball, it seems like it takes a week or two of a lot of winning and a week or two of the people in front of you having a lot of losing to move up those well, the, spots. Somebody was saying, I, I think it was an ESPN analyst, was saying that for each team in front of you, between you and that last wild card spot, you have to add a game on because of that whole process of, well, if the Angels are losing, that's great, we're making ground on the Angels, but if the Royals and the Twins are winning, it doesn't really matter that yeah. much. Because you have multiple people fighting for one spot. Yeah, and this is, I think, since the addition of the second wild card spot, it's allowed for what I would say is more interesting, you know, September baseball, but it also allows for that team to back into the playoffs the way that the Rangers are tempting to do right now by losing over and over and over, but because everybody else is losing, they still have a shot at getting in. I think... This second wild, uh, second wild card spot is the best thing they could have done for themselves because baseball right now has a couple problems. One of them is the games are uh, way too long. Yeah. I think it was yesterday, the day before, uh, I, and I don't remember the matchup, but a game went like four and a half hours. Of that's not fun and for anybody. That doesn't even sound that long to be honest, because with baseball there's no time limit. So if the game's tied, you're going to extra innings. If you go to 20 innings, and I've been at one of these games that went to 18, 19 innings, you're there for six hours. And if you're talking about getting there early so you know you don't have to deal with uh, parking issues and, and leaving and dealing with all the traffic, I, that's a long day. And this is, and we're a far cry from the ages of you know the Barry Bonds and uh, McGuire's and yeah. the uh, Sosa's where you were watching because something was, history was happening. It was exciting every time at bat. Now that there's none of that going on, Judge sort of brought it back a little bit, but now it's died Giancarlo off. Giancarlo Stanton said, Stanton's well. the same thing. But there was more buzz around this Judge, oh, absolutely. judge kid. The the Because he's young, he's young, he just came up. 6'7", 270. He's, big, yeah, he's big a giant. Man. The issue I have is, is that until baseball can change it to make the game more exciting, they're going to continue to lose fans, and they are. It's people like you who are statistically minded that like analysts, yes. analytics, are the ones that are obsessed with baseball. And there's only a few of us. And there's only a few <laughs> of you, and even you know, and and those are the people that fill out these stadiums every, uh, every week. But while 
baseball, I mean, while uh, football and soccer, and soccer is even a, a very, very monotonous game as well. It, it After a while, it does become old, even though there is a lot more moments of, oh, 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 almost, right? The issue is, as long as there's football, college football, basketball, baseball is going to continue to die. Yeah. They have got to figure out something. And we're not saying give up all your traditions, because I know one of the big things about baseball is our traditions. Yep. The the issue history is, and tradition. Yes, the history. The, the problem is if you don't change, you, it doesn't matter what your history is and how proud your traditions are, your game will die. You'll end up like hockey. And the problem with hockey is it's a great game, but very few people get into it for one reason or another. And I know Sean won't like that, <laughs> but... Sorry, Sean. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> but, uh, but that's the issue. The issue is... is, is Baseball has a real shot of becoming an irrelevant sport, and that is not good for anybody. And, you know, when the NFL brought in uh, instant replay, everybody thought, this is brilliant. Let's go use this in all the sports. And MLB was like, okay, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll figure out how to use instant replay. Well, all that's done is just extend the games. It's not creating excitement for the fans. It's just making it more boring. Oh, for baseball, yes. Yeah. For baseball, it has it is had the complete opposite effect. Baseball, no one even doesn't even there's not even a a second guess of what's going on because it's so slow. In football, it's boom boom. What happened? Yeah. So they slow. It's almost a chance for them everybody to slow the game down and get the call right. Baseball, I mean, the closest they get to that is is maybe a a, a check swing or or a foul ball or if a fan touched it. Is all ba is all that instant replay does. Yeah. It's not going to affect the ball or strike count. They're not allowing it to do that. It is just an open play and it doesn't really happen very often. And honestly, you just don't want to do anything in baseball that slows the game down. No. That's it. And they keep talking about speed okay, is we're a gonna problem. Yes. We're gonna speed the game up. We're gonna speed the game up. But the things that they're doing to speed the game up have not done anything. In fact, a lot of them are rules that were already in place that they just weren't using, and guess what? Hey, we're going to start making sure that we're using these rules. Guess what? They're not. Big surprise. Baseball is going to end up, and I, and I hate to say it, I, I think something like rugby or soccer is going to pass it. Very Even possibly hockey <laughs> could possi is going to, in the next 10 years, probably you know, pass baseball when it comes to Kids just ratings. aren't playing anymore. It's just the games are too long. And, and Kids, uh, for instance, how many times have you heard when I was young, kids wanted to be baseball players? They wanted to yeah. be baseball players. Not anymore. Uh, not anymore. I have not heard a kid going, I want to play baseball. It's, I want to be a football player. I want to be a basketball player. You know, not only are the games slow, these baseball players do not have a presence in society. They don't have a presence on social media. Yeah. They don't have a presence outside. They, they, you know, baseball players usually don't get into problems. And, and they're very clean. <laughs> and they're, the only problem they run into is, is, a, is a bat corked, or is it, is it a P, uh, uh, PEDs? Yeah, yeah, PEDs. Those are the only problems that you usually yep. have with baseball. And on that note, we'll see you next time.